And here's the starting lineup. Starting on the pole from Cromwell, Connecticut, it'll be the number eight of Ed Clark. Outside of him, driving the number 93, Jay's Towing and Performance Plus Auto are the sponsors. It's the number 93 of Clay Petschke from West Warwick, Rhode Island. Then we'll check out the third starter today, driving car number 84 from Fairfield, Connecticut. It's Ed Giles, so next door to him, in the Al Joy Tire sponsored number 67 machine from Southington, Connecticut, Mark Patrick Foley. Starting on the inside of row number three from Old Saber, Connecticut, it's the 83 of Ronnie Oldham, and outside of him will be the number 33, that, that's Quaker Hill, Connecticut's Chuck Rogers. The seventh starting position will belong to car number 52, a first time winner this season, it's Al Stone the third. And next door to him, a guy's driven one three times during 2005, car number 43 and John Puglisi. Going off in the ninth starting spot, it's Clinton, Connecticut's Dan Darnstadt driving the zero. And going off in position number 10, it's the, the 2005 sportsman champion, it's the number 80 of Norm Root Jr. And a man with 18 top 10 finishes will start in the 11th position, car number 38 and Joe Curioso the third. Next door to him in car number 89, Dwayne Conant. Starting in the 13th starting spot will be the number 16, that's Walt Hovey from Scotland, Connecticut. And outside of him will be the number 30, that's Pawkatuck, Connecticut's Dennis Perry. Then we'll check out car number 11 as we welcome him back to the speed bowl, the comeback, Jack Aquilina. And then the 77 car will be next door, Anthony Atkinfora. Going off in position number 17, it'll be car number 15, that's Ledyard, Connecticut's Dwayne Doerr, and outside of him will be the number 29, that's Uncasville, Connecticut's Scott Cook. Now, ready to go next will be car number 25, a driver from Plainville, Connecticut, it's Corey Hines. It's stationed next to him. Remember, he uh, ran into misfortune yesterday in qualifying. He's forced to use a backup car in car number six, Richard Staskowski. Next on the starting lineup will be the number 36, that's the Steve Shaw Excavation Hometown Oil Sponsored Entry for Ashaway, Rhode Island's Roger Perry Sr. And outside of him, from Rocky Hill, Connecticut, driving the number 47, will be Roger DiMartino. Then let's check out the 86 car, a guy who won a 50 lap feature already this season, Bill Gersh Jr. And next door to him, Louis Lunch and Rings End Lumber, Brings us car number 79 from Stratford, Connecticut, Jim Procasini. Next on the lineup will be the number double zero. That'll be Joe Nojic out of Bristol, Connecticut. And outside of him will be the number 40. That is Kenneth Ban Bamford from Coventry, Rhode Island. And Ray Downing Sr. in car number 60 will be our final starter in his 50 lap shootout in our sportsman division. Giles approaching the combination of Chad Williams and Roger Voicine. The green is out. Giles on the outside has an answer for Clay Petschke. Giles looks to make that outside line work for him as they head down the backstretch. He and Petschke race side by side. Ronnie Oldham right there looking for any break he can get as they go into turns three and four. Trouble on the front straightaway as Bill Gersh, that car has almost come to a standstill in turn number three. So Gersh is out of danger and we have quite a contest shaping up for the lead. The top 10 cars paired two by two as they go down the backstretch. Now Ed Giles makes a break out front. He has the lead. Ronnie Oldham takes up the battle on the outside line with Clay Petschke as they head to the strike. Oldham, who has uh, won twice in 2005, looking formidable on the outside groove. Yellow comes out, a congestion on the front straightaway and in the middle. number 43 car starting to move up through the field along with Al Stone and Dan Darnstadt in car number zero. He never won a sportsman feature until this year. He's won three in 2005. Oldham has pushed his way out into the third spot. Now they're trying to make the inside line work as Puglisi in the 43 and Darnstadt on the inside of the zero look to push the 67 of Foley back high on the outside lane. And Foley is losing some ground and the man who is picking it up is Dan Darnstadt. Smoke coming from the 60 car way down at Ray Downing Sr. But uh, we are able to stay under green. Maybe the fastest car right now might be Dan Darnstadt, who is hanging out in the top five. The top five cars go as if they were towed by a string. And now Joe Curioso makes that string into the sixth spot. And here comes Norm Root on the inside of Foley looking for the seventh spot. 
Actually, Dan Darnstead has four wins this year, but he's caught up on the outside, and that enables Curry also to move up. Sideways maneuver by Ed Giles, and that will cost him the lead, as here comes Clay Petschke, as uh, a little high and outside maneuver by Ed Giles, as a, a caffeine twitch developed in that car, and it cost him the lead. Petschke gets a run on the inside line now, and he has the lead. Hanging right there on his back bumper is the 84 of Giles. Side by side down the back stretch is the 43 of John Puglisi, as Ronnie Oldham drops back just a shade. And here comes Puglisi. He has his sight set on the number two position. Power move by Puglisi, and he is able to daredevil his way into the number two position. Right behind him, Joe Curioso. He said that car was good enough to possibly get a season-ending victory. And our champion, Norm Root, he is getting busy in car number 80. Puglisi pulls away from the pack there, battling for positions three and four. Sets his sight on Petschke, our leader. Curioso side by side with Giles. They go through turns number two. He will get that third spot as they go down the back stretch. And here comes Norm Root on the inside of Giles. Ronnie Oldham might have made contact with the front straightaway wall the last time around. We'll see how he navigates the turn this time. Darnstadt able to put the schnoz of that car in front of Ed Giles. Darnstadt, Darnstadt now back on the bottom groove. Looks like he's up to his old tricks as a five car. Or the six car of Staskowski does a little pirouette in the John Deere country and gets back out onto the speedway. Petschke still leads the way. He's chased by the 43 of Puglisi. Right on Puglisi's back bumper is the 38 of Curioso. Then comes Norm Root, Dan Darnstadt, and Albert Stone to round out the top six. So John Puglisi had a great season this year as far as wins are concerned. Maybe not as consistent as he would have all liked it. But he is holding off Joe Curioso, who works as a security guard for Electric Boat. He is in third, and Norm Root Jr. in fourth. So uh, Norm Root Jr., he won back on opening night. Can he prevail with the Tom Care finale? It would be like making the Keystone address and then uh, coming up and making the uh, farewell address later on in the season. Those top six cars continue to run as they have been. The best battle on the track right now slips further back from position seven eight and nine that is where the 83 of ronnie oldham resides in the seventh spot right now he's chased by the 16 of hubby and the 84 of giles so while hubby is back in car number 16 and he is having a good run as he's looking for some elbow room underneath the 83 car meanwhile a surprise face at the front of the field clay petschke in car number 93 his best finish all season long has been seven that was back on may 21st and right now he is hanging tough in the lead, but he is about to get a visit from Mr. Puglisi. Puglisi and Joe Curioso look to turn up the heat on Petschke as he comes off turn number four. Puglisi with those ghost-colored cars. He goes down into turn number one off Petschke, but still right there is 38 of Curioso, and now Dan Darnstead has slid under Norm Root as they go down the backstretch. Some sparks were flying between the zero and the 80 car as they came together like two symbols in an orchestra, and the loser of that scenario was Norm Root as he fades back to fifth and now is trying to hold off the threat of Al Stone the third. Pet Petschke out of shape. As they go down the backstretch, he rewrites the ship as they head into turn number three. That allows him to continue on with the lead. Puglisi still right on his back bumper. And the 38 of Curioso on Puglisi's bumper for third. This has been a highlight film so far for Clay Petschke, but he is going to have to handle something he's never experienced, lap traffic. The first driver will have to boogie around is the six of Staskowski. Challenge for second. Curioso, he gets one. He might get two for one. Joe Curioso goes from third to first in two turns to take over the lead. Three wide. Who will get right? It is a six dropping off the pace. And Joe Curioso, what a dazzling move that was. Matt had mentioned that lap traffic, and that did cost Clay Petschke, as now the 38 of Curioso leads the band. Petschke now looks to regain that spot as the 43 of Puglisi looks to get that second spot from Petschke. Boy, I'd like to see that one again on Frog Pond videos. Is in the space of a turn. Joe Curioso goes from third place to the penthouse. Norm Root has his momentum back. He is breathing down the tailpipe of Puglisi as Puglisi gets underneath the 93 of Petschke. So Petschke's car was good for the 21st 20 laps, but now it might be starting to get away from him. Once again, lap traffic played a little bit of a hand in the race between Petschke and Puglisi as Puglisi got tied up behind the 89. That allowed Petschke to get a run, and the other cars, the 80 of Root, the 0 of Donstadt, was also tied up behind the 89. 
The most intriguing battle is might be a little farther back as Walt Hovey in the blue 16 car goes to the outside of Ronnie Oldham. And Hovey is able to complete the move, and he made it look easy. All this time, Joe Curioso has checked out from the field. He has an eight-car length lead on the 93 of Petschke, who slides high. That allows the 43 of Puglisi to get a run on him as they go down the backstretch. But Petschke is able to hold his line on the outside. Slides again up the track this time. Will Puglisi get a run at him? He does on the inside, and they will go side by side across the strike. John is all over him like frost on the windshield. The gold comes out. A car on the grass, that's Joe Nojic on the back stretch. Fourth, green flag will fly, Curioso on the inside, Petschke on the outside, and Curioso shoots out in front as they go through turns one and two. Boy, that 38 car has some giddy up as it separates itself from John Puglisi in car number 43. Guy uh, a sideways, Petschke, Darmstadt makes contact, also caught up in it from behind, Mark Patrick Foley. Cook was slowed down momentarily, the yellow comes out, Nojic stranded in turn number two, but Petschke got sideways, contact between the 93 and the... Looking for the green flag. Curioso on the inside, Petschke on the outside. Green flag will fly. And here comes John Puglisi on the inside, looking to make it three wide as they go into turn number one. He cannot do it. Curioso still holds on to the lead, but Puglisi is right there on his inside as they go down the backstretch. A little three wide genocide on the restart. Puglisi now challenging Curioso. He has got the leverage on the bottom groove. Right behind Curioso is Norm Roop. Right behind Puglisi is Dan Darmstadt. Curioso still holds about a three-quarter car length lead as they go back. into the wall in turn two. He keeps it moving. We stay under green. As we go back to the front now, now Curioso still leads the way. Puglisi is in second. Norm Roop hanging on to Dan Darnstadt on the outside, but now Darnstadt gets a little squirrely as they go through the back stretch, and Roop holds on to the third spot as they go down into turns one and two, three and four. Good battle between Walt Hovey in the 16, Jim Procassini in the 79, Little contact between Darnstadt and Procassini. Hubby gets very wide along the front straightaway, and he will give up some ground to the 79 of Procassini. Also a little bit of a wiggle for the 67 of Mark Patrick Foley. He is able to correct it. Foley is able to correct it. Now he gets a challenge on the inside for the number 15 and the 29 of Scott Cook on the outside, battling for that spot. Cook and the 15 side by side as they go into turns one and two. Now the 15 looks underneath the 67 of Foley. Dwayne Doerr has some momentum as he tries to jackrabbit his way underneath the 67, and he is able to complete the maneuver. Meanwhile, up at the front, the script remains the same. Curiosity, Curioso leading, but hanging on like his shoelaces in second place, the 43 of Puglisi. Darnstadt cranking it up against Norm Root, and the zero car of Dan Darnstadt has exploded in the third place. Darnstadt looks to get that position as they go through turns one and two. He completes the pass, drops Root into fourth, and the 79 of Procassini runs fifth. But back up front, our leaders have checked out. They have about a four to five car length lead. Curioso and Puglisi, one, two, as they come to the strike. And down to the final 20 laps of our Sportsman Town Fair Tire Finale feature. Norm Root, remember, he has already locked up the crown. He is riding fourth between them, two of the veterans. Dan Darnstadt and Jim Procassini. Procassini, one of the more colorful drivers. Norm, Walt Hovey having trouble with handling as uh, that car seemed to get away from him, almost like he was driving a Zamboni machine in turn number four as that car got sideways. But Hovey able to make the necessary correction. Hovey writes the ship. He's able to hold off the 15 of Dwayne Dorr. Dorr again looks on the in inside as they come to the strike. Hovey still holds that line, and he continues to hold on to that spot. Again, Dora looks on the inside as they go through turns one and two. Here comes Dora. He has some firepower, but not enough to derail Hubby. Hubby is able to close the door on Dora, but Dora gets one more run on that inside. They will go side by side across the stripe into turn number one. On the outside, Hubby slides up the track a little bit. That allows a three-wide battle. The 86 now slides underneath the 15, and the 86 takes up the battle against Hubby. But Bill Gersh turtled his way through the first 10 laps, but he is up to speed now, challenging Walt Hovey for a position at the front of the field. The plot remains stable between Curioso and Puglisi with Darnstadt third, Norm Rood fourth. They shuffle their way off the fourth corner, 
Curioso is 15 laps away from his second career victory. But while that battle has gone on, the zero of Darnstadt has closed the gap between, there was once a two to three car gap between Curioso and Puglisi. He closes in now, has Puglisi in his sights, and here comes Norm Root trailing in the fourth spot. Well, Dan Darnstadt has been around for a long time. Of all active drivers, he has had more mini stock wins than anybody. So uh, he's pretty efficient in these long races and I'm sure he saves some car for the final 13 laps. Meanwhile, maybe the guy who has uh, gained the most positions during our last 15 laps, the 86 of Bill Gersh. So uh, he's won a 50 lap before, and uh, he's doing a good job right now. Back up to the front now, John Puglisi right on the back bumper of Joe Curioso. He looks to get a bit of a run as they come through turns three and four. Now Darnstadt has definitely entered the fray as those top three cars go by as if they were pulled on a string. Boy, that advantage has shrunk faster than the president's approval rating as the 43 of Puglisi and the zero of Darnstadt about to scrap for second. And they might be ganging up on our leader, the 38 of Curioso. Root is fourth and Pocassini in fifth. Curioso has shown that he can put the car where he wants, but now it is time to really put the pedal to the metal. Puglisi right on his back bumper gives him a little bit of tap as they go through turns one and two. Now down the back stretch into three. Puglisi right there. Well, the 38 slides up the track a bit, and that'll allow the 43 to get a run, but nothing there. Curioso still holds the lead. So John Puglisi is all over Curioso like a white jumpsuit on an Elvis impersonator. Darnstadt in third, and Darnstadt has uh, opened up quite a bit of breathing room between himself and Norm Root. So three drivers are at the front of the field trying to determine our champion down to the final nine laps. The question, can Joe Curioso hold off Puglisi you know that Puglisi has saved something for these final few laps. Curioso has opened up a little bit of an advantage now. Puglisi there trying to get back what he can. Lap traffic will play a bit of a factor as they close in on the leader. The leader's closing on some lap traffic. They'll go around the double zero of Joe Nogent, completing another lap. And now it's still back on his back bumper is the 43 of Puglisi. Let's see what Curioso does. He gets around Roger DiMartino. Curioso still looks like he has a lot of firepower as he stops across the stripe, and maybe some more lap traffic will come into play. What a way to end the season for Curioso. Darnstadt, after dropping off the pace a little bit, has started to come on. The leaders have a bit of a clean air gap until they come back into lap traffic. They will come by this time by with six laps remaining. Curioso still holds the lead. Puglisi right there gets a little bit of a spin, but Darnstadt is, has nothing for him as they go down the back stretch. The thickest vapor trail continues to be generated by Joe Curioso. Here comes Darnstadt in a battle for second underneath Puglisi. They bump, they grind, but here comes Darnstadt as he scrambles into second. This time, Darnstadt is able to get the position away from Puglisi. He now tries to set out at our, after our leader. This time by just four laps left. Is there enough time for the zero of Darnstadt to catch our leader, Joe Curioso, as they come to the strike? He is going to have to weave his way through lap traffic. He gets by Conan. Now he approaches the six of Staskowski. He is going to get by him, but he's doing it. Dan Darnstadt is doing the same thing. Darnstadt now gets by Staskowski as they go come to the strike, but this time three laps left, both in clear traffic. Curioso with a five, with a four-car link lead as they go into turn number one, and he has one more lap car to get by. Some smoke coming from the zero car. It's also a fired up driver. Curioso increasing his lead as we come down to the final two laps of the sportsman season. Curioso leads the way. Darnstadt is chasing as they go down into turns one and two. The 43 of Puglisi runs in the third spot. Running in the fourth spot will be the number 80 of Norm Root. They will go down into turns three and four. And Curioso has widened his lead on Darnstadt. This time by, white flag will fly. One lap left. In the Sportsman 2005 season, Joe Curioso leads the way into turn one and two, goes down the backstretch. Darnstadt, three to four car lengths back. Puglisi runs third. This time by, they will come into the leader, works his way off turn number four, and it is Joe Curioso. He will take the checkered flag in the victory. Chased in second will be the zero of Dan Darnstadt. The 43 of John Puglisi runs third, and the 80 of Norm Root Jr. finishes in the fourth position. So. For a most improved driver in 2005, here's one of the leading candidates right here. We talked to him earlier today. He said this car was capable of pulling off a victory. He did it for 50 laps. 
Our winner of tonight's 50 lap sportsman feature as he takes off the gloves and the helmets, but uh, he did a great job. Remember, some of the veterans were behind him. Guys like Dan Darnstadt putting on the pressure along with John Puglisi and Norman Root. But here's a man who uh, stood the test of 50 laps, our winner, Joe Curioso. Second victory of the season and the 19th top 10 recorded by this uh, talented driver. And uh, he was off the radar screen last year and this year he has made headlines. Joe, I guess the exclamation point on what was a great season. How did you keep your car together for 50 laps? I don't know, this car was killing me. It was pushing so bad. I was doing all I could to keep John behind me. I was driving in the mirror as much as I was looking out the front windshield. And uh, Dan Darnstadt looked like he was fast, but you were faster as Norm Roof putting on a smoke show. Joe, what do you think you have to do next year to be able to do that at the Town Fair Tire Finale and win a championship as uh, Joe is being graduated by John Puglisi? What's it going to take for you to get to the next level and do that? Well, I don't know. Just more consistency. I mean, those guys were we should have been out of a bunch of races this year, and those guys, they put together cars, changed radiators. I mean, they, they had rear ends that were bent, and they just kept going. I mean, that's, that's what it takes right there. Okay, that's word from today's winner. As uh, Joe, I know a lot of people have been responsible for today's win. Yeah, I didn't, and he really thanked my sponsors, uh, North End Deli, Ashway Performance Engines, give me all the motor to take care of, take down this win, Yankee Remodeler, Dr. Colson Podiatry, PMW Marine Repair, I to thank John and Lori, Coastal Signs, uh, H Sports, and I hope I didn't forget any of that. I have to thank my father for being here every week. My buddy Vito up there taking a picture with his phone. Uh, <laughs> my girlfriend, Kathy, he always coming here supporting me. And, and Ray Williams. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, there's a reason he was taking a picture with his phone, because this man was dialed in today on speed dial, Joe Curioso. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's official. Let's meet our champion, Norm Root Jr. Norm, how does that feel to be a champion? Ah, oh, great. The car wasn't that good on the track, but uh, I didn't think a one-legger would do that kind of a donut, but I guess I proved him wrong. <laughs> well, last year at the finale is probably the most disappointing moment of your racing career. You could have left here angry. Instead, you left here determined to do better. Why was that? Uh, I just, I, I knew we could do it. I knew we got there at the end of last season, and uh, I just came into this season determined with um, nobody was going to beat us if we could help it. Um, I'm glad it didn't come down to this one because the car wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. But the finisher was, ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for our 2005 sportsman champion, Norm Root Jr. So a great way to end the sportsman season, Joe Curioso putting the finishing touches on what will uh, one of the great comeback stories of the season.